Jacob, what do you think of McAllen's touchdown and I guess his celebration too? Yeah, um, obviously tight ends. We're going to celebrate when we get in the end zone, right? We enjoyed just dancing, making a fool of ourselves. But um, no, man, just the, you know, how he prepares and the athlete that he is kind of shows up in that moment. Um, he's able to you know, make one miss and step out of one and then accelerate, get to the end zone is really special. And it was cool to watch. I know, you know, obviously, I'm sure he talked about it. Others talked about it, but, you know, guys like Brew on the perimeter blocking for him. He's extremely grateful for, for guys like that. But um, cool for him to, to step up and make a play like that. Jacob, did Joe Milton and the offensive leaders or whatever go out of their way yesterday to address the team? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, any time when you don't necessarily feel like something went as well as you want, like because you know, as an offense, we're expecting to score a lot of points, right? And then just didn't quite move the ball the way we wanted to. It wasn't quite efficient enough in the red zone um, for our standards, right? We won the game, which is really all that matters at the end of the day. But uh, for our standards, you know, we realized that there's there's more a lot of work to do and a lot of just things that we need to talk about. and. You know, you hash it out, you talk about it, and kind of move on and just get ready for the next week. Coach Heifel's talked about needing to get into a rhythm earlier in the game. Yeah. How do you feel like the offense can get into a rhythm earlier in the game? Um, I don't know, man. Just kind of stick into our basics, our bread and butter, like kind of getting some confidence plays and, and making plays, right? I think the biggest part is, is seeing a guy make a play down the field or, you know, having a back, you know, find a crease and, and have a good run. Not necessarily something that's huge, 75-yard touchdown, but just you know, putting good plays together and kind of you know, getting that first down and getting that ball rolling is, is really big for us. You've experienced kind of playing in Gainesville before. In what ways is that challenging? And in, what do you remember from your last game that you played there? Um, it's challenging for a couple of reasons. I think just uh, the weather, first of all. It's, it's warm, it's humid um, in Florida. And so obviously preparing for that. It's been humid here, it's been warm here. So I think we, you know, we've done a good job of exposing ourselves to that, that environment. Um, Obviously, the crowd, the same way when you come to a place like, like Tennessee, when you come to Neyland Stadium, is, you know, it's a hostile environment. The crowd's not necessarily for you and not necessarily rooting for you. Um, and so just kind of getting used to the noise and, and the ruckus and hopefully able to, to kind of quiet it down before it gets too out of hand, I guess. Heibel told us last week that Dylan Sampson didn't start the offseason on the leadership council, but got added on to it, I guess, during fall camp or before. Just what did he yeah. do to gain the confidence of the team? Um, <clears throat> he's just kind of stepped out there, man. He, he, he has been vulnerable and has been willing to, you know, put himself out in front of everybody and say, like, look, like, I'm here to, to win. I'm here to be a leader. I'm here to just play my role, right? And as a young guy, it's really cool to see him uh, step up and be extremely vocal because that's, that's something I think a lot of people struggle with when it comes to leadership is, is being able to call each other out, being able to have the confidence in, in what you do as a man to, to say, hey, I need you to come along. I need you to do better. And he's done a great job, man. He'll stand in front of the team. He'll stand in front of the offense with full confidence and be able to talk and communicate everything that you know he feels needs to be changed. And um, he's done a really good job with, with that running back room, but also just on the offense, for sure. Jacob, selfish, selfishly for you, yeah. uh, this program's not won a conference championship in a quarter century yeah. since they won a national championship. As you go into the Florida game and, and it starts getting real, how much do you think about that, man, I want to make it happen this year? I mean, yeah, I think selfishly but also just because that's what the team goal is right like that's the the goal every year for this team is to win the SC championship and to win the east like you have to start <clears throat> you got to think about just everything right big picture you can't win them all unless you win this one right so I think once we get into this SC schedule it's you know it doesn't really matter what color the other team's wearing it doesn't matter what names they got on the team who the coach is like where we're going it's just a matter of being the best team on the field that week and I think that you know it gets harder and harder right you play better opponents and, and that's not something that we're you know, denying, right? We're not saying that everybody else isn't good. We're just saying that, you know, all we have to do is be the best one on the field at that moment. A little off the field, obviously you guys walking into the stadium or ahead of each game, it's a little, get to show off your personality a little bit yeah. and how you guys style yourselves. Mm -hmm. Who's the best dressed and is it even close? I think everyone knows the answer to that. I, I would say myself, but um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't know. I think, uh, especially with NIL guys are, getting a hold of some more money and getting some cool clothes and stuff like that. So it's cool to see just everybody, how they express themselves and, and what they wear and uh, the ability to be able to do that. Um, kind of I don't know, getting out of your comfort zone a little bit, definitely this week with myself, with the whole denim and everything. So uh, glad that it was received well, I think, by a lot of people. I don't know, really. <laughs> I honestly don't. I've had the vest for a couple weeks now and have not been able to wear it. And so I finally figured that, you know, I try to put something together with it and it worked a little bit, I guess. 
Jacob, I, I know as a Tennessee kid yourself, you're aware of the fact that Tennessee hasn't won in the Swamp in quite yeah. some time. But do you feel like your teammates and that aren't from Tennessee and the coaching staff that is new to Tennessee, does that even matter to them? Do you feel like that's something that will be overblown this week? Um, I think it's something that, um, in the nicest way possible, everyone outside of the building cares about and as talks about and, and thinks is a, is a big deal. I don't think to most of the guys on the team, like you mentioned the younger guys, like whether they really know about it or not, I, I'm not sure. But um, just one of those things, again, that doesn't really matter, right? When we're on the field, who cares how long it's been, right? Whether it's here or there or whatever. I'm just going out there and just trying to compete and be the best on this day. Obviously, it'd be great to win there for sure after this many years, but uh, something that we're not not necessarily worried about. Anything else for Jacob? Okay, right. thanks, y'all.